Well, it was, you know, it was typical of, of a really interesting development in that I was looking for something else. And, okay. and you know, it was, a, it was a, like PCR was the, the possible uh, outcome of a solution to a hypothetical problem that didn't really exist. <laughs> I mean, I was working on trying to sequence single base pair, you, you know, think what they call SNPs today, single nucleotide polymorphisms, because those were medically important. And I was trying to do it with oligonucleotides because I ran a lab that made them, mm -hmm. and we had really improved the efficiency with which we made them over the three or four years prior so that we were making, we could make them a lot faster than the company, Cetus, that I worked for, could use them. Okay. I had seven people working for me, and I was thinking, well, I'm either going to have to cut the staff down to like about three, because now we've got these little automated devices that'll do it, or I'm going to have to increase the demand for oligonucleotides. So I started thinking of what else can you do with them, and I thought that's, it's possible that you can make a, a rapid clinical assay for single base polymorphisms. And like sickle cell anemia was a good example. I, I people there. That took, back then, maybe you'd go into a clinic and you take a sample and maybe three weeks later you'd know, which is a lot of agonizing. Kind mm -hmm. of. And I thought you know, it'd be nice to have that in one shift mm -hmm. in the hospital, kind of. you go in and they'd let you know. And I, I thought oligonucleotides maybe were the answer there, but I was really um, I, I, was, I was a chemist, I still am a chemist, mm -hmm. and I really didn't have an appreciation for the hugeness of the human genome compared to, say, a 5,000 base pair plasmid that I was using as a sort of a model system. And, and I was, was thinking of this method that would require a couple of oligonucleotides. Mm -hmm. One of them would sort of be a control, but they would be pointed right toward each other, just like in a PCR reaction. And and then I and I was thinking of how I'm going to get rid of excess deoxynucleotide triphosphates or something like that. There was a couple of technical problems I was trying to solve, and one of them, the way I was going, to, I decided to solve it was to to like run a sort of sham reaction first with the oligonucleotides in place and the sample. And then, then, then I add my radioactive tracers and stuff and run it again, and because it was going to use up the, it was just not for, not for the idea at first of like duplicating the signal, but then I realized the side effect of that was going to be that I was going to double the, the signal if mm -hmm. there were enough uh, like deoxynucleotides available. And I was trying to get rid of those if there were any coming in with the sample. But you were out driving. I mean, well, I mean I you, driving, you just no, had, you had this in your head and you were thinking about it constantly and then you just realized that there was you, a way. The, you don't think in the lab as, <laughs> as much, you know. Yeah. I usually think, uh, I was spending my weekends up in Mendocino at a little cabin and I would drive up every Friday night and come back on Sunday night. And that's really, that was a nice, it was about two and a half hours and it's sort of your, you're just, you've got something to do with your hands <laughs> and you can't do anything else until you think. That's, that's when I did most of my thinking, mm. actually, because the day-to-day -day life in a laboratory doesn't allow a lot of, you know, there's all these letters in your inbox and there's your phone ringing and there's all these people that you have to deal with and stuff and you don't have really that kind of time.